Hello everyone, my name is Spencer Hallberg. I am a graduate student in the Roy Lab at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today I'll be discussing our current work where we are developing methods for generation and analysis of regulatory models for Aspergillus fumigatus. Gene regulation is fundamental to cellular function. Regulation of genes is controlled in part by proteins called transcription factors. These proteins bind to specific locations of DNA sequence and initiate transcription of particular genes. Understanding and modeling these relationships is an important part of understanding an organism's function and will be crucial in mitigating disease in the future. A gene regulatory network is a model that attempts to capture this relationship between transcription factors and regulator genes and is typically modeled using a graph. In these graphs, edges between transcription factors and target genes represent a regulatory relationship. There are many methods for generation of gene regulatory networks from data. Typically, transcriptomic data, such as RNA-seq, is provided to the GRN inference algorithm. A graph structure learning algorithm is applied to the data to produce a graph structure that connects a set of gene regulator to gene targets. There are multiple different strategies that are used in trying to generate such a model, including Boolean networks, information theoretic models, differential equation-based models, and probabilistic or graphical models. The output of such a model can then be used to try and predict novel gene targets for further study. Gene regulatory networks provide deep insight into the functional relationship of genes within an organism. One area of active research is the use of gene regulatory networks to investigate disease states. The GRN can be analyzed with additional data such as GWAS studies or new RNA-seq data to determine links between regulatory relationships and disease. Here are a collection of papers which have leveraged GRNs to predict mechanisms of infection and other complex disease states. Our work focuses on leveraging GRN inference to study the fungus Aspergillus fumigatus. Aspergillus fumigatus is a complex fungi with many protein-coding genes. Of these genes, 820 are associated with gene regulatory mechanisms. The combinatorial complexity posed by the large number of regulators makes GRN, GRN inference a challenging problem. The inference of a GRN for A. fumigatus is important because of the clinical and agricultural impacts of the fungus. Aspergillus fumigatus is a pathogenic fungus and results in a lung disease called aspergilliosis. Aspergilliosis is hard to treat because aspergillus does not respond to many of the currently available antifungal medications. Moreover, recent work has shown that co-infection with the SARS-CoV-2 virus can result in complex disease states and have a mortality rate of 68%. In addition to aspergillus' role as a fungal pathogen, it also produces many secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are a class of molecules related to chemical defense. As such, many of these metabolites play an important role in the disease state of Aspergillus fumigatus or could be used as targets for future drug discovery trials. Finally, Aspergillus responds and produces chemical signaling molecules called lipoketin oligosaccharides, or LCOs. LCOs are a prominent signaling molecule in, plant, in the plant fungal symbiosis mechanism Specifically, in legumes, LCOs result in the recruitment of fungi and the formation of root nodules. Root nodules are the site of nitrogen fixation and play an important role in agricultural processes. The goal of our current study is twofold. First, we aim to produce a gene regulatory network for Aspergillus fumigatus using publicly available RNA-seq data. Our second goal of this work is to develop a user-driven visualization framework that can be integrated with any GRN output. The goal, this goal is motivated by the fact that network inference results in noisy regulatory networks that are prone to making erroneous regulatory predictions. Our hope is by making our networks more accessible, we'll motivate biologists to validate predictions made by our inferred network. To infer the network, we use the Merlin P plus TFA framework. First, 20 bulk RNA-seq datasets pertaining to Aspergillus fumigatus were collected from publicly available sources. Together, this comprised 294 samples from over 60 different conditions. We also collected 632 DNA sequence binding motifs pertaining to transcription factor binding sites. We used the motifs to construct a prior network, then using the gene expression maintenance matrix and prior networked, we applied network component analysis or NCA to the data. 
The result of this algorithm is a new matrix, which we call the transcription factor activity. I'll provide motivation for this step in future slides. Once we have the inferred activity, we apply Merlin P to generate the gene regulatory network. Finally, we use our visualization framework called MerlinViz to generate an interactable HTML applet. MerlinViz incorporates multiple mechanisms for integrate, interacting with the GRM. These methods are packaged in a user-friendly user interface that enables hypothesis generation. To provide context for the use of network component analysis in our algorithm, I'll discuss one of the main assumptions of expression-based network inference. Specifically, the expression of transcription factors like X1, X2, and X3 are used as proxies for the binding of the transcription factor to the binding site. However, the expression is typically not enough to fully capture the relationship between transcription factors and their targets. This is because many important, important regulatory mechanisms occur after transcription. These include post-translational modification, activation of the transcription factor via phosphorylization, and the accessibility of the transcription factor binding site. The network component analysis is used to estimate the actual effectiveness of the transcription factor. To accomplish this task, NCA leverages known motif binding sites of specific transcription factors to estimate the effective potential of that transcription factor. NCA is solved via the following equation. First, the expression matrix is modeled as a matrix product of the prior network adjacency matrix, which I will call A and the transcription factor activity matrix, which I will call P. Using a constrained maximum likelihood update procedure, A and P are iteratively updated to minimize the difference with the true expression matrix. NCA is affected by noise in the input prior network. To combat this, we have introduced a regularization parameter to the update objective function. This L1 norm measures the difference between the input prior network and the inferred network connectivity. To test the effectiveness of the regularization parameter, we tested on a simulated network with known transcription factor activities. With the introduction of the regularization parameter, we see that the accuracy of both the transcription factor activity estimation and the network structure is improved with when an initial prior noise is given. We have used regularized NCA in conjunction with the Merlin P algorithm to produce an inferred GRN network for Aspergillus fumigatus. Our inferred network is composed of 5,574 genes and a total of 7,422 edges. The network that is displayed is colored by module. On the right, I have shown the top 20 most connected regulators of the predicted network. Some of these regulators are tagged with the NCA prefix. These represent the transcription factor activity profiles of the genes that are computed with NCA. In particular, the regulator, the, sec the regulator with the second most targets is the estimated transcription factor activity of ATFA. I'll be discussing this gene later as it appears that it is an important component of the LCO response mechanism. After generating the network, we have developed a visualization framework for post-analysis of the network. We have used this to analyze the Aspergillus network as it pertains to aspergilliosis, secondary metabolic processes, and the LCO response. Our visualization framework is called Merlin Viz. It is a suite of network analysis techniques that directly integrate with any inferred GRN. The output of Merlin Viz is an interactive HTML applet produced via our Shiny. Merlin Viz is composed of three main analysis techniques. First, it is capable of interacting with inferred Merlin modules, which relate genes via co expression and regulatory sets. Second, we have implemented a Steiner tree estimation algorithm to identify regulatory hubs connecting a subset of genes. Finally, we provide a graph diffusion mechanism which allows the user to propagate scores across the network. Diffuse scores give a global importance of a particular gene to a particular pathway. I will first discuss how module analysis can be used to go from the GRN to a hypothesis. Before module analysis, we use Merlin modules. Each gene is assigned to a Merlin module during the application of Merlin P. 
Each Merlin module is composed of a set of co-regulated and co-expressed genes. Merlin modules are typically enriched with genes that have similar function and thus provide a powerful tool for analysis of the local topology of the network. To determine the particular function of the module, we compute enrichments of the module with geo genes of a particular geo term. This module, shown here, is enriched with a secondary metabolite process term. Modules are often regulated by a small set of regulators. Each gene in the module can be regulated by any combination of genes within the set of regulators. The Merlin network recapitulates a well-known regulatory mechanism that pertains to hypoxia response in Aspergillus fumigatus. Here is a brief video demonstrating how Merlin, v Merlin Viz can be used to search for such a module. First, the user can input a search criteria. As I enter the SRBA and SRBB gene in the search box, the genes propagate the network visualization space. Below is a table that shows all genes in the network visualization space and includes factoids such as their neighbors, degree, as well as a brief gene description. I'll now toggle on the Merlin module box. This shows all genes in the associated Merlin module in the network visualization space. As we go through these genes, we see that we recapitulate many of the known genes in the, or, or in the hypoxia response pathway. All of this information is summarized in the Merlin module tables below. Here we can see a brief list of geo terms as well as key regulators of the module. Finally, by accessing a specific gene name in the nodes table, we are directed to the gene's information on FungiDB. This can provide additional context to the Merlin module. I will now discuss how the Merlin-Viz Steiner tree method can be used for hypothesis generation. As I've mentioned previously, module analysis is a good strategy for finding co-regulated genes. However, this only gives a very shallow insight into the network topology. And in order to extend this framework, we have implemented the Steiner tree approximation algorithm. Given a set of genes of related function, the goal of the Steiner tree problem is to find a minimum spanning tree to connect these genes. The intermediate nodes here are denoted as Steiner nodes. These nodes are of particular importance to gene regulation because they indicate either shared gene regulators or shared gene targets between modules. Finally, the size of the Steiner tree gives some indication of the relatedness between regulatory hubs. This is important when looking at shared regulatory mechanisms. We have applied the Steiner tree algorithm to the particular problem of finding co-regulated secondary metabolite genes in our network. Gliotoxin, cumitramorgan, and fumaquinzoline are three important secondary metabolites with an important clinical application. However, the regulatory mechanisms of these metabolites is poorly understood. It is expected that they are co-regulated since they all play a role in the antifungal defense. Our collaborators in the Keller lab selected two genes from the Steiner tree to modify. These genes were selected because of their proximity to the corresponding Merlin modules. They then measured the production of secondary metabolites using mass spectrometry. Here are the results of the mass spectrometry. For each of the two target genes, two knockdown strains were generated. We see that there is a significant change in the gliotoxin and fumiquinzoline production in both of the knockdown strains. This indicates that the Steiner tree was able to correctly identify possible co-regulators of these two secondary metabolites. Finally, Merlin Viz allows users to use graph diffusion as a third method for hypothesis generation. Node diffusion, like Steiner trees, are used to get a global interpretation of gene regulation. The user provides a set of seed nodes with scores for a subset of genes. Then a signal is diffused across the network from the seed nodes using a Laplace and kernel function. Each node is assigned a score based on its local topology and its relatedness to the seed nodes. Unlike Steiner trees, network diffusion can take advantage of additional data. For example, p-values associated with different, differentially expressed genes can be used 
as the initial scores of significant nodes. After node diffusion, the new node scores would represent how significant all nodes are to the biological context of interest. We have applied graph diffusion using Merlin Viz to one final pathway of the Aspergillus function. Specifically, we looked at differentially expressed genes after 30 minutes of exposure to LCOs. The size of the nodes in this figure demonstrate the diffusion score. Notably, the ATFA transcription factor is highlighted as a key component of the LCO response. Exposure to LCOs is characterized by reduction of secondary branch sites in Aspergillus fumigatus. Our, our collaborators at the Ein Lab used this as a biomarker for the LCO response mechanism in three strains of A. fumigatus where the ATFA gene was modified. Here we are showing the relative number of secondary branch sites per micrometer along the three strands. We can see that in the wild type strand, when exposed to LCOs, there is a reduction in the number of secondary branch sites. If we relate this to the overexpressed and knockout ATFA strains, we see that this response is no longer seen. This indicates that ATFA plays an essential role in the hypobranching response to LCOs. In this work, we have demonstrated how Merlin PTFA can be used to infer regulatory mechanisms for model organisms. Here we apply the algorithm to infer a network for the ecologically and clinically relevant fungal species Aspergillus fumigatus. We have also developed the Merlin Viz framework, which is a post analysis suite for GRN inferred networks. Merlin Viz produces an interactive HTML applet that can be used for hypothesis generation. We have applied Merlin Viz to generate hypotheses related to two key pathways in Aspergillus fumigatus. Our initial results indicate that the tested components from the Merlin network do relate to the corresponding tasks. Future work from our collaborators will help to continue to validate these results. I would like to thank Subtarshi Pine from the Roy Lab for his significant contributions to the GRN and friends using the Merlin PTFA algorithm. I would also like to thank Chris from the Ein Lab for his work in generation of the validation of the ATFA response to LCOs. Finally, I would like to thank Sung Chul from the Keller Lab for validation of the secondary metabolites pathway. This work was funded by two grants provided by the Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation. I would also like to thank the Center of High Throughput Computing at the University of Wisconsin-Madison for providing us with computational resources for this project. Please reach out to me for, or with any questions pertaining to this work, and I thank you for listening.